Here we go. Hey, everybody. This is Dr. Tara Lynn, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Kick Off Your Damn Heels. I have my colleague Joshua Waters here with us today, and Joshua is going to tell us about himself, but the reason I have him on here is because he has some really kick-ass videos on LinkedIn, so I want to make sure that you guys all check him out on LinkedIn, and I will have his LinkedIn profiles and social media hand handles in the show notes today. But that is how I actually met him. So I want to welcome Mr. Joshua Waters to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, yes. I'm blushing from all the, all the beautiful compliments. Um, uh, your videos are awesome. I love them. Yeah, it was a, it's kind of a, a new passion project of mine. Um, and I've got a lot of awesome inspiration in Chicago, just a lot of beautiful scenery for me to me to utilize so mm -hmm. um, but yeah so uh, I'm Joshua Waters I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Illinois um, I'm originally from Iowa so Midwest is kind of my it's kind of my jam um, but I went and got my LMFT I got my marriage and family therapy degree in Georgia South Georgia mm -hmm. so I was down there for the last six years up until there's just this last summer when I moved up to Chicago um, and so uh, a lot of my work has been with couples and families um, and, and individuals, of course, too. Um, but so I, I don't know if you had already mentioned the, the brand, but like kind of my, my personal brand, the thing that I'm working on is, is called the, the Breakup Artist. Um, yes. And so, yeah, so that was like just kind of a, a fun introduction to, to social media, even for me, too. I, I had never really been involved in social media. I think it's, it's really hard to do. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit daunting. I got to tell you, it is a pretty little bad. bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, and all my peers are like, you know, trying to, trying to do their thing on Instagram. And I'm like, I have no idea how to, how to do any of that. I so. seek my advice from local 17 year olds. <laughs> That's, beautiful. That's beautiful. Yes. Um, so yeah, so I guess I can talk a little bit about that. Um, please do it. hold on a minute. So yeah. I, I want to make sure that everybody knows that you specialize in breaking up, okay? And so breaking up can be breaking up with people, breaking up with bad situations, breaking up with mental health symptoms, like this, because breaking up is hard to do. And I said, we should sing this song, breaking up is hard to do. And you're going to make it easier, I hope, you know, or at least get some understanding around why it's so difficult um, to break up. Now, I just want to put a little, some parentheses around this. So when I work with people, I usually tell them three major things. You can accept something completely for what it is. You can change something about it, which is usually something about yourself, or you can leave it. And typically that means breaking up with it. And I will tell you that the majority of people do not choose leave it. Um, when I tell, and I think they don't choose it because they're freaking scared of it. What, what would it mean to break up with whatever it is? Okay. So with that in mind, let's get started with the breaking up process. Yes. Yes. Well, I really like how you just broke that down. Cause I think that's, um, there are different ways to approach problems. I mean, and, and, you know, most people I think, tend to go for the denial one, which is, I don't want to deal with this, so I'm just not going to. <laughs> yes. um, and, and, you know, eventually it might come up later or it might not. Some people are comfortable with, with just feeling with, this comfort. With being uncomfortable. Exactly, which, you know, that, that, that can be helpful in, in other therapeutic areas. But, um, mm -hmm. but yes, I think that, that it's been a passion of mine to help people learn how to break up with various problems. Um, it started with a, a personal breakup of mine. Um, it was my, my first love, my first long lasting relationship. Um, and he and I spent three years together. We like had a family, we had dogs and cats and parties and, and houses and friends and gardens. <laughs> it was just like, it was the whole, the whole shebang. Yeah. Um, and we realized that through that process, we, had kind of put each other through a lot of trials and tribulations to learn about relationships, to learn about how to love, how to, how to be in a relationship. And, um, and so we chose to break up together. Um, you know, it helped that I was a, a brand new baby therapist going to grad school. Um, he was also a psychology major, very interested in, in relationship dynamics and stuff like that. Um, so we chose to go through the breakup process together and we talked 
throughout the entire process. And, and it's been coming up on three years now that we've been apart, which is almost the same amount that we've been together. That's crazy. Um, and we're really, really good friends, like really strong friends. And, and we learned a lot about ourselves and our families and, and why we put ourselves through various issues and problems throughout that time. Um, and I think that was really helpful. So like you said, kind of generalizing that to other mental health issues, to other problems that we experience in life. I think there's, I think it's, it's not necessarily necessary, but I think it's really, really helpful when people choose to learn more about whatever they're breaking up with first, instead of just trying to negate it, instead of just saying, I don't want to feel that anymore. I want to take some pills and make it go away. Or I want to, I don't want to talk to that person anymore. They hurt me. And I don't, I don't need to learn anything about myself. That was all them. Like, it always takes two to tango. The relationships we're in, we're, we're in them for a reason. And if we're either putting up with something for, for some particular reason that we don't understand, um, or we're just not ready to move on. So I think it's, it's helpful to kind of spend some more time exploring those things. And when you say relationships, you're not necessarily just talking about love interest relationships. You're also talking about um, career relationships, coworkers, colleagues, that type of, type of stuff well, too. Yeah, our relationship to pain, our relationship to anxiety, our relationship to stress. Like yeah. relationships are, are everything. I mean, just how we feel about anything that we experience in life, for sure. Families, I'd like family relationships are... Ugh. crazy yeah mm -hmm. we'll say complicated complicated is a good word yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's complicated <laughs> so what advice would you what well not advice but what is a do you have a process that you take people through like what would be some of the steps of that process um i think the first step is really just identifying what it is that we're we're trying to break up with or what the relationship is you know i think sometimes people are more focused on uh their bodily sensations or like you know what they're feeling versus or what their what the sensations are versus what they're actually feeling emotionally mm -hmm. um and some people are more connected to the emotions versus how it actually affects them in in their daily life um so I think the first step is really just identifying what the problem is and how it's affecting you, how it's, it's changing your ability to interact with people or to, to go to work and to live your life fully. Um, so the first step is, is that identifying part. Um, the second part, which is the more fun part for me, it's the really like insight oriented part, which is mm -hmm. figuring out how the problem or how the issue is both good and bad, how it causes problems, like how, like I'm trying to think of some examples off the off the cuff real quick, but like how how fighting with your partner might make it difficult for you to go to work and focus on work. Um, that's a bad thing in in some senses because you're not able to to get through your work day. You're not able to like compartmentalize. Um, but the good part about that too is it also highlights how strongly you feel about your partner, it's, and you can kind of tease out the positive of you're really intensely passionate about the person that you're with and and it, it's hard to separate something that matters so much to you to, to something that may not matter so much like work does that make sense it does it, it no it makes a lot of sense and in my mind i was thinking it's kind of like a cost benefit analysis when when um what is the cost of leaving what is the cost of staying what is the cost or the benefit of leaving the benefit of staying like yeah. and, and those are hard things for people to get to you know mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. to see the the positive in a bad situation kind of you know like but again if you don't do that you're still going to stay stuck right yep yep so yeah, you can I call that like the, the pain of change versus the pain of stability. Like which one is, mm -hmm. is more painful at that time? Is it easier to yeah. stay in the dysfunction and try to figure it out? Because maybe you don't understand what's going on and you want to understand, or is it better to to move on and, and find a different way to, to get through life? I like that. You said the pain of change versus the pain of stability. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, that's like the difference between um, ordinary pain and suffering pain you know, right. It's pain all around, but what, which one do you want? You know? Right. Which, yeah. So yeah. that that's an interesting way to put it. All yeah. right. So let's say somebody has made it through those two processes. Like what is the after effect of breaking up? The after effect of breaking up. Um, I think that you will know 
you'll know, at least this is what I see with my clients, you know when you've made it, quote unquote, when you've gotten there through the other side of the breakup, when you're able to talk about it or, or express it in a way that doesn't hurt as much anymore. When you're able to say, like, yeah, this is what I went through. It was a really tough time. It taught me these lessons about myself, about you know how passionate I am in relationships or how strong I am, how resilient I am. And being able to, to put both of those parts into one whole and, and express that comfortably. A lot of people get stuck in just the negativity and um, say, so, you know, it was terrible. Like I, it was just so, so horrible. I had to go through that for so long and I lost so much of my life throughout that time and money and blah, blah, blah. Right. Or they're too much on the other end, and I think trying to oversimplify it and just make everything into a positive, like, oh, I moved on, it's great, I don't have to worry about it anymore, like, it's not my problem. <laughs> it's um, funny, because I'm watching, uh, I happen to come across some pictures, they're called, like, I don't know, something like destroy the dress or burn the dress or whatever it is, like, these wet, these people that are divorcing and they're, they're, like, burning their wedding dresses or destroying their, and I'm like, What? That yeah. is, that's entirely confusing to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like, more a, traumatic. Like, done. yeah. yeah. <laughs> like exactly. Done. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. And so that's the, that's the whole purpose for me is that, you know, I've, without, without going into too much and you let me know if, if you want me to go into a little bit more, I'm a, I'm an open book, but, um, you know, I've experienced a lot of really traumatic loss in my life, like from a, from an early age and each time I've, I've come up on one of these losses, it's really just reinforced the importance of relationships and, and being positive and, and loving and enjoying the people that we have while we have them because um, we never know how long they're going to be around. And so a big, a big thing that always stuck out for me is like when people break up, when you've loved somebody for so long, whether it be six months, six years, 60 years, whatever, even if you decide that this relationship shouldn't go on anymore, if we don't want to, to continue in the same way that we are, why should we leave that in a really dark negative place where we now have to hate them, where we have to like cut them out, shut them off, block their number, not talk to them anymore. A lot of times like we still, um, I'm still in contact with my ex's mom. Like she sends me birthday cards and, and random text memes and stuff like that because we had a relationship then and, I don't know why that has to end just when we break up or, or why it should. If, if people are still alive, if we have positive parts of those relationships, like why should we have to cut all of that out just because we don't want to continue sleeping together? You know? Right. Right. Because especially if you, if it's a long-term thing and you've developed or formed relationships with family members, you know, and they legitimately like you and you know, it's, it's a legitimate loss for everybody, but does it have to be, such a hard loss, you know, right. and I do see this a lot in, in divorce. Like it's, I tell people all the time, you don't have to move to the point of gathering evidence to hate someone to, to break up the relationship. You know, yeah. you don't have to get to that screaming match that uh, all of that, you know what, you know, mm -hmm. your, your evidence lives within you. You know, you don't have to gather more just yeah. to make a dramatic exit you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. and, and especially I, I look at this, especially if there's like kids involved, you know, we, we, I think the dynamic of that is changing a little bit. Who was it? Was it Gwyneth Paltrow some years ago did a conscious uncoupling or something like that with her, mm -hmm. with her husband, I think with her kids and they wrote this big thing. And so now you see that a little bit more with celebrities, I think this idea that we can break up peacefully and mm -hmm. still be a family because I say this all the time. If especially if you have kids, like you're still a family, mm -hmm. no matter what, you're you're still you still have to have interactions with this person. Right. So don't promote hate just to stay apart. You know, yeah. stay, stay apart because you know you need to. Mm -hmm. You know, to be healthy, right? Right. Right. You know, I I hate to bring up Doctor Phil, but he did say one really good thing. He said, "I'd rather be healthy alone than sick together." And sometimes we need to make that decision, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I love I, that. I, I think it was profound that he said mm -hmm. that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, and, and like to the same degree, like generalizing it again from from intimate relationships to other mental health issues, is that 
some of these, I think some, or maybe even all of the problems that we experience in life are not just from the problem itself. It's from our, our feelings about the problem. So how we interact with the problem. Oh yeah. Anxiety. I think anxiety is there for a reason. Like if we think in evolutionary terms, like if we're worried about not having enough food, the anxiety is going to, to ramp up our, our nervous system to want to go out and find some freaking food so we can feed right. our family. And that way, anxiety is a good thing. Right. It's when we feel the anxiety and we say, ooh, I don't want to feel this. I don't like this feeling. Then now you're having anxiety about your anxiety. You just doubled, <laughs> you just doubled it, you know? Or sadness, like sadness is real. Sadness happens, grief, loss, all of it. Like it's okay to have your feelings, but when you start saying like, oh, I don't want to be sad anymore. Now you're, you're angry with the sadness and that's just, again, doubling the feelings. Right, or um, denying, denying the sadness or denying the anxiety. Like I, yeah. so when I left my state job to go into full-time private practice, I had tremendous anxiety. I was having panic attacks every day. Um, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. It was terrible. And that lasted like six months. And I ended up going to the doctor and they prescribed me an, an anti-anxiety. And I went home and I took it two nights. And then I went, Duh. like my body is alarming me to get the hell out. Not not like dampen it down and stay yeah. with the medication, you know, that is still primitive and we still ignore it all the time. Yeah. You know? And I think with, well, I shouldn't say only with depression, but depression, um, depression and anxiety. I mean, I think we damp it down to stay put, yeah. you know, like we don't want to experience it well, or we experience it later and then trudge back right back into the fire you yep. know, of what's causing it, whether that's a love relationship or work or, you know, whatever, it means that something is not working for you, you know, and you need to do something about it, right. not just, not just ignore it or prescribe it away. Right. You know? Right. Well, and, and going back to the point of like one of the processes of, of learning how to break up, like my ex and I should have probably broken up a year and a half before we did <laughs> yeah. like it was it was a mess like the last year and a half but we yeah. stuck it out because you had all these things had, probably what <laughs> you had all the things well we had all the things yeah we had to get through our lease you know and and child care for a dog is expensive so <laughs> um but because we talked about this after we broken up like part of the the breakup process for us and, and processing those things was that we we knew even during those times that we were learning things about ourselves and and putting ourselves through those those trials to learn more and I think when we even with medication like if we if we're taking something or doing something to dampen the feelings or just to kind of stay put stay stuck where we are that might be bad quote unquote and like the long the long run because we're just holding ourselves in this problem that we could get out of. But I think that's also good because we're learning more about what's going on. We haven't learned enough. We haven't gotten to the point of being convicted about, I don't want to actually feel this way anymore. I want to, to learn about it and find a way to move on peacefully. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's sometimes like it, good. Good is a weird word to use for it, but like, I think it's useful to stay stuck in these problems sometimes or to, to you know, figure out why. What, what is the benefit to being stuck in this problem? Is it easier because we don't have to do the hard work of exploring our feelings and digging through family trauma and making changes to not feel that way? Um, you know, it's scary to confront your feelings. Well, I think on, I'm reflecting on my own, the time of my life when I had the anxiety and I am, I'm actually, there's some gratitude that I went through it because I had never experienced it like that before. So I totally get it. And now I don't ever want to do that again, you know? So the learning part is if I never would have experienced it, I would not know that come hell or high water, I don't want that again. Yeah. So it's not that I'm going to like run when things get a little bit tough. But I'm really going to work on, you know, self-care and understanding first and yeah. then maybe, to, you know, have a dramatic exit later, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> depending, you know, but so far, yeah. if I would not have had that, I, I wouldn't have this insight 
for now, like, oh yeah, you know, when my eye twitches, that means I'm under a lot of stress. And I don't have to wait for my eyes to do this all day to fix that, you know? Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, so yep. it's, it's, everything is a learning experience. But some of the language around mental health really just bothers me because people say things like my anxiety or my depression or my PTSD. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, what, well, what are your thoughts about that when people have ownership of it? Oh, it's terrible. It's it, it hurts me. It does. It like it physically hurts me. Well, and, and I think it's it's like you said. It's a part of the culture because people have just come to come to take on that role so that that yeah, so that they can explain it easier, I guess, or so that they can you know. It's, it's I think it's harder to talk about anxiety as this this thing that comes and goes that's external from us. It's easier to attach it to ourselves and yeah. try to take responsibility for that. Um, but, but I mean, it's, I think it all just goes back to the labels, period. Like we, we put labels on everything. We have a book of diagnoses that were created by a bunch of stuffy white men in a room like 30 years ago. And it's all just bullshit. It's all just words. God, Despite- I love you so much. Like- oh my God, I hate it. And I tell I my clients that too. And they, they like that. Like I tell them from an, up front, oh, yeah. like I don't care what your diagnosis is i'm going to give you one so that we can have insurance pay for your shit but it doesn't matter because either way we're going to be addressing how you feel we're going to be addressing how those feelings change your behavior and how they affect your life um so i know i'm kind of getting i'm going on a tangent a little bit there my that's all right Um, (laughs) but yeah no i think it's important to identify when we start to to put like take ownership of these problems. If we start to say it's my anxiety or my depression, um, because that means that something's broken within us or that something's wrong within us. And it's, it's anxiety is there. It's, it's going to come and go. You're going to experience it at different points in your life. Mm -hmm. Depression is going to come and go. Sadness is going to come and go. Like these issues are, are everyone experiences them to a certain degree it's just how we relate to them, the feelings that we have about our feelings that make it a problem. Right. The, and the relationship that we have with those feelings. When, when we start um, claiming ownership, like some people have a, a lot of their identity wrapped up in being the anxious person or the depressed person. Like they mm-hmm. literally have you know, it, they don't know where they begin and they end because they've got so much wrapped up in this idea that, well, you're just depressed. I'll, you're just depressed. And I have to resolve my life to that type, that depression because it's who I am, you know? Yep. And I think, you know, breaking up with that is scary, right? Like, cause you're breaking up with an identity system almost that you've developed over time. That's yeah. scary. That is really scary. For sure. Like, yeah, it'd be like me breaking up with, you know, being a mom, right? Like, <laughs> that, that scares me, you know? So how, do you, is the process different, do you think, breaking up with, like, your mental health identity versus breaking up with a person? Is that different, or is it still relatively similar? Um, I think it's still relatively similar. I, I think it's, I approach all of it, like, from the same from the same framework, like the, you have to figure out like why you're, why you're dating the problems that you're dating, like versus dating the problem. I love this. Yeah. yeah, Why you're dating the problem. And and if you want to stay married to the problem, or if it's something that you can learn and grow from and move on to the next one. Um, So no, I I think it's very much the same. Like there's, there's a, a reason for why we feel the way we feel. Um, about different problems in our lives. And there's reasons why we date certain people and, and come to love certain things that, um, that are different. I don't think we're, we're always dating the same exact person over and over. We might have certain characteristics that we, that we follow or certain personality traits that we follow, and some of them are good, some of them are bad. Um, but no, I think it's all, it's all pretty much the same as learning about why, why those things make sense to you. And like you said, that cost benefit analysis, like at what point does this relationship that I have with pain or with anxiety or with this person or that person become more detrimental than it is beneficial? 
and is it something we can work with or is it something we need to to move on from and go a different direction nice all right so i think we're gonna end on that note what do you think i love it okay great all right as i said before all of joshua's um contact information will be in the show notes please check him out on LinkedIn because breaking up is hard to do and everybody needs a little bit of a navigator in the breakup process. Um, and I forgot to tell you, I was in Chicago a couple weekends ago. I totally forgot you were there. What? I would have, I know next time I'm there. Well, I'm I will. Up with you. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <This is> <laughs> you're going to come and then tell me weeks afterward that you're there. I see. I see. <laughs> Next time, next time. Next time. <laughs> All right, everyone, thanks for joining us and we will talk to you soon.